Hi, I'm Nate, and you're watching Photo Learningism. Wanted to continue exploring how to do visual effects within KDN Live. Taking another step into version 2104 and just kind of see what we can do. Let's get to it. So once again, I'm Nate, this is Photo Learningism. If this is your first time joining in, thank you so much. I do a lot of work on this channel to surface the cheap or free art technologies so that you can know about them and make good use of them. Also, it's good to be a part of a community of learners, of like-minded creators uh, looking to gain experience and deepen our knowledge in how various art technologies work. So that's what we're all about. Thank you for being here. Wanted to take a look at another concept today. We've looked at how to do lightsabers on a very basic level. We've looked at how to do uh, muzzle flares on a very basic level. I was kind of thinking outside the box a little bit about doing some some basic composite animation. And the idea came into my head about using a paper airplane and trying to simulate kind of a, a flight and fly behind type of thing. So I took some very rough footage. Um, it would have been a little bit better, although I noticed a bug with uh, version 21.04 uh, where the video stabilization doesn't seem to work. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, this is me running around my backyard and uh, let's check out the video first and then we'll step through how to do that. All right, so first thing, let's cut over and I'm gonna turn off myself and here we go. Okay, so that's the basic layout of it. And let's now jump into the project here. So once again, uh, now that I've just turned myself on, I'm gonna turn myself back off again so you can see everything here. All right, this is a very short, basic proof of concept here. And I'm gonna start by actually taking out the audio aspects. All right, so uh, let's just drop those off here and we can ignore those. Okay, let's focus purely on the video here for a moment. And I shot some video just on my, my phone. A very, very basic attempt here, I'm kind of working by myself. The first thing that I attempted to do, and this was to kind of solve a problem I created for myself, is to transfer the shot between me holding the paper airplane and then moving off to where it was just an image. I actually went and took a picture after the fact of the airplane and the rough perspective of what I had been holding it in. I was taking a guess and I, I masked out or rather I cut out everything else and made it a ping, a PNG. So it was nice and easy to work with. It had a transparency layer already. And I brought that in. So I had to kind of do a flash zoom in here. And then at the last moment, you'll see my hand just kind of drop off. I had to do that really fast. So it looks a little unnatural there and I have to figure out a better way to solve that. Um, it's a little difficult again working by myself. Um, but I was trying to eliminate <laughs> the fact that I disappear by zooming in. That's what that was all about. And then we've transferred over to the PNG. Now I used a series of things here. I made a couple different cuts here, but they're really all using the same basic things in that I used the corners effect here. I've touched on that before. Uh, go watch the video on making lightsabers if you're kind of curious more on corners. I talk a bit about how these controls work, but this gives you the ability to set perspective with a layer, with in this case an image. So you can actually tweak a little bit about how it moves in the space. That's how I'm able to do things like suggest dips and rises and do that with the corners. And you can make keyframes to do that and then tween to fill in. That's it's pretty cool technology to do that. The next thing that I used uh, was a little bit of blur because 
when I was trying to cut it out, it looked a little rough. Now, to get around that, you could probably just do a higher quality isolation, either with you know green screen or just be really tight and precise when you cut out the object when you're doing it and solve some of that problem. So I kind of invented, again, another problem for myself, which I had to add just a tiny bit of blur to compensate for the imperfection, kind of the, the slight rough edge of the paper airplane. The transform here you see here was just to give a little bit of zoom motion in and out, not so much for perspective because you can't do that with transform, but again, to give a little bit of forward and backward. And the last piece of this is actually brightness, which is keyframeable. And what that's doing is we are adjusting for when we come into contact with the rays of the sun. There were moments where we either pass over the sun or we get close to it, and you'll notice how the brightness changes where I attempted to, to either make it look like it was an iris change a little bit because it does a little bit as it passes over the sun. It's it's <laughs> taking in new light it didn't have before, but I wanted to reflect that on the paper airplane itself so you can actually see that that actually changes. And I was pretty impressed that we could achieve that uh, with just some basic controls. So the rest of it was just trying to make it pan left and right. And yeah, it could be better, could be a little tighter. But for a simple try with just a little bit of time, this was actually, I'd call a successful experiment. And I'm curious to try this with other kinds of applications, uh, things that are kind of meant to have some dimension of their own um, on screen. You could do very simple concepts where if you wanted to have, uh, as just thinking outside the box, spaceships or airplanes or things that fly in the background of your shop, this is a way you could do that because you can simulate the perspective moving distance with transform and then with corners and of course adding um, blur if it happens to come that close proximity to what you're doing. Um, and then you have the final piece, which is the light, <laughs> making it match up with the light sources, which is a big deal. It would be really cool if there was a way to kind of add like casting. I haven't figured that out yet because that's, that's a really big deal about having shadows change um, more accurately on an object, and we'll see what more research turns up on that. But as a proof of concept, this is it, the flight of the airplane. And I hope that was interesting for you to get just a really quick sample and an idea and a proof of concept for an effects of what Caden Live can do. Caden Live is a really fantastic open source free tool. I encourage you to check that out. You lose nothing by doing that. I've done a lot of videos on those. I'll put a card up there so you can check some of those out, uh, spe uh, specifically about visual effects. Um, but it's an awesome tool. I'd encourage you to go do that and um, have fun. <laughs> so thanks again for joining in. I know this was kind of a shorter video, but short and sweet is sometimes good. Uh, you can absorb that a little easier. Uh, if this was interesting to you, please give me a thumbs up so I know that this is along the lines of your interest. Consider subscribing so you don't miss out on the other awesome things that I plan to do in the future. And leave a comment ask a question, join the community of learners, and uh, become a part of uh, a larger group of like-minded creators. Thank you so much for spending your time with me, and I'll see you at the next video.